Hello again everyone, Dr. Vincent Lau here, presenting another TE case series on VV ECMO insertion. Now I know what you're thinking. This seems like a topic that would be well above what I would normally do in my TE practice. Well, I'm here to dispel and demystify the usage of TE for procedural guidance and allay some of your fears simply because it's VV ECMO insertion. For those of us who work at centers with ECMO capabilities, insertion is usually in the setting of a rapidly deteriorating patient and having these skills at your disposal can definitely help out your CVT colleagues with insertion and optimal placement, but ultimately help your patient. As always, we would ideally want users with expert skills, i.e. cardiologists, cardiac anesthetists, echo trained intensivists, or ER physicians to help out with TE guidance to assist with insertion. But in a pinch, hopefully the screencast will be able to help train you to do this skill for a rapidly deteriorating hypoxic patient requiring ECMO. As a disclaimer again, this TE series is not a comprehensive overview of TE. So getting to the case, we have a female with a vital signs absent VSA arrest of unknown origin. And for 24 hours, she has the hypothermia protocol initiated. On post-admission day nine, however, she subsequently developed bilateral serratia VAP and she's treated with imipenem and served on the ARDSNET protocol. The next day, the patient suffered a VF arrest secondary to her hypoxia with multiple shocks and rounds of epinephrine Despite this, she had ongoing hypoxemia with SATs only 30% on 100% oxygen. She was also in profound shock, requiring massive amounts of inotropes and vasopressors. CVT was consulted for emergent VV ECMO, and the ICU team started inhaled nitric oxide at 20 parts per million. Unfortunately, this only brought SATs up to 69%. CVT surgery requested that a TE probe would be made available to help with VV ECMO cannulation. Pictured here is the VV Avalon ECMO cannula that would be used during insertion. Before insertion, planning was undertaken to place a new left IJ triple lumen for IV access, as the old right IJ would be rewired for Avalon catheter insertion. During the time that CVT is setting up for insertion at the head of the bed of the right IJ, we put the TE probe down and are able to see the first initial images of the mid-esophageal four-chamber view at zero degrees. We see that there is moderate to severe LV and RV dysfunction despite massive amounts of inotropes and vasopressors. This dysfunction is likely multifactorial with ongoing hypoxia contributing factor, possible myocardial stunning from defibrillation, but also evidence of possible underlying coronary artery disease leading to an ischemic VF rather than a PA or asystolic arrest. This is evidenced by regional wall motion abnormalities and a heterogeneous pattern of contraction. In this image, it looks like the septum doesn't contract as well as the lateral free wall does of the LV. Another etiology that we wanted to rule out was the accumulation of bilateral pleural effusions as a cause of hypoxia. This is the descending aorta short axis view with the descending thoracic aorta here. And here we see the lung that's suspended in a mild bit of pleural fluid as seen here. And this is the long axis view with an elongation of descending thoracic aorta. The lung pocus the day before indicated only mild bilateral effusions, and this TE confirms the same. This was an important step to image, as it meant that we focus more of our energies on ECMO cannula insertion rather than bilateral chest tube insertion for these mild pleural effusions. And there's a densely consolidated lung seen here on the left-hand side, indicating ARDF. So during actual Avalon insertion, we have mid-esophageal bicaval view at 90 degrees. In order to do that, we start at the mid esophageal four chamber at zero degrees, and then we add 90 degrees to the omniplane, and then we make a right hand clockwise turn in order to get there. Once we see our anatomy, we I can identify the left atrium seen here, the right atrium seen here. We see the IVC here going down towards the left hand side of the screen, and then the index mark is pointed towards the patient's head, so this is the SVC seen here. As we go further down from the right atrium, if we head downwards, we can see down here the right ventricle. And if we're lucky, sometimes we can see the opening of the tricuspid valve. So as you can imagine, we'd want to see the wire going through the SVC into the IVC and not heading down towards the right ventricle. So you'll see that in the upcoming clip. So in this clip here, we see that the SVC is here and we see a wire insertion coming through into the IVC. And we're going to follow that down by actually inserting our probe even further and we get to the diaphragmatic junction. So as we can see here, we've actually inserted our probe in the esophagus further down and we've still made a right hand turn to have a look at the IVC 
So we can see the IVC seen here with the wire inserted right here, and we see the liver at the bottom of the screen. So this is good positioning of the wire for Avalon insertion of UV ECMO cannulation. Following this, we can see here that overcross the wire in a Seltinger technique fashion, we see the Avalon catheter actually being pushed into the IVC as well. After the Avalon catheter is advanced into the IVC, we have to go back up towards the right atrium to make sure that the basket is aimed back down towards the tricuspid valve to make sure that the outflow of the ECMO cannula is aimed towards the right ventricle. So as we can see here, we've actually pulled our probe back towards a bicable view. And we see the left atrium seen here, right atrium seen here, IVC, as well as the SVC. And we see the ECMO cannula placed right here. Eventually what we have to do is throw color across the ECMO cannula as we're trying to look for the outflow track as it points downwards towards the right ventricle. And as we can see here, our color box is large enough across the ECMO cannula. And as we can see, see a large alias jet of flow aiming down towards the right ventricle. Now this is not ideally placed. We can actually pull this back and have the jet aim further down towards the right ventricle and the tricuspid valve to make sure it's optimally placed. And when I told this to the CBT surgeon, they were quite happy as their flows were at maximal five to six liters per minute. And we were getting good oxygenation as our oxygen sats on our finger probe as well as on our gases went up to 100% immediately after ECMO cannula insertion. In case summary, this female crashed onto VV ECMO, uh, secondary to a serration of VAP pneumonia and ARDS. This is her x-ray seen here on the right-hand side, and we see dense consolidation on the left as well as on the right-hand side with only preservation of the right upper lobe. Her ECMO cannula is seen here, and we had the previously uh, cited left IJ for IV access insertion. Subsequent to this, she was on ECMO for approximately seven days, and imipenemone was placed on for seven days for the serratia of VAP pneumonia. She subsequently had eventual weaning of her ECMO and extubation, and she was transferred up to the floor for rehabilitation. After three months in hospital of rehabilitation, she had achieved full neurological, renal, cardiac, and respiratory recovery, and was eventually discharged home in good health.